final scheme we call Terrace, which actually really does kind of take some of the, the campus design principles of this terracing down the mountain and, and uses it within the building scene. So the ground floor of this scheme is also just building services. We don't have a sticker on here, but there's no student occupied space here. The next floor is the first occupied student floor. And again, um, some of the program on this level is similar to the loft scheme. So we would have that dining space surrounded by some of the cabaret, um, perhaps uh, retail, um, and then some meeting and student activity spaces here. We always have this spine that kind of connects this circulation and then moving through space through the spaces into this kind of from the AQ into the dining hall. But we're still working on some of that, uh, on the, how you move through the building. So the next level, um, this could be a double height space that actually provides some of that, again, that volume or that relief of, um, so you don't have that lower ceiling height everywhere over some of the lounge space, perhaps in some of these areas as well, and there's that circulation spine again. So this level is where we connect over to the AQ again, bringing students in. There might be some stair. You can see what's happening, and this creates a double height volume. There might be some student activities in here. Um, and then all of these roof, all of these white areas could actually be occupied roof where you would be able to come out. And so this scheme provides multiple opportunities to be able to use the outdoor spaces or, um, with the multiple level of roof decks. And all of the floors have that opportunity where in, say, the pavilion scheme, you really only had one roof deck. The next floor is, so we might have, this is the top floor. And this again, we put the multi-purpose room up here and then with some lounge space. The nice thing is that it, it, this is all, and in all of the schemes where we've kind of located on one floor, it could actually be something that's booked out and it could be some sort of revenue generating type of space that could help the SFSS. Um, and it's separated, there's enough lounge within the building that you know if you rented this out for a temporary period, made some money, it may not, you know, it, it wouldn't impact how you use the rest of the building and then the roof of the building. And so one of the things you might notice is this kind of overhang, which we're looking at actually moving back because one of the concerns is how much this might shadow um, Fairview, uh, sorry, uh, might shadow Freedom Square. So if we go to the, the section, which I sh actually I didn't explain what these views are. Um, let me just go back really quickly. So this is a section through the building and you'll hear this a lot over the course of design. And it's in all of these, it's if you slice the building in, in half and you looked at what's happening at the different levels, like a dollhouse actually, if you think of you know, where you had the dollhouse and you can spread it, spread it apart and see all the different floors, that's what a section is. That was actually a good analogy. I've thought that before. <laughs> so one of the things about this scheme is that this terracing actually provides this cascading of space and volume and provides that visual connection from the different spaces to be able to see through the building. Now this is just a moment in one section through, so we just chose to take it through the stair, but you could have that visibility into the different spaces as you stand or use the different floors of the building. And so that's one of the more unique things about this scheme because it really does connect all of the spaces and provides that continuity and makes it feel like you're moving through the building without really going from room to room to room or floor to floor because they're all so interconnected. Um, again, no, serve, no building functions for students down on the ground floor. Um, some of these spaces might have less opportunity for daylight, but in general, this scheme provides multiple opportunities because of that terracing. If you had a, a block of a building, you really only have limited opportunities, but this actually gets daylight into the further, into the deeper parts of the building. Um, and then you would come into the building, there might be a nice lounge space, a double height space that gets you up into these upper spaces. And you'd still actually have views because the top floor is a lot, or matches what the AQ Plaza level is. So it does take it up one level over what we talked about last year. Um, and some of these areas could connect over to the landscape on level 10, um, and then on the other side as well, which you can't see in this, in this image. 
So in plan, this kind of stacking of the boxes. Um, and you can see in here the outdoor space between the two buildings that we would look to maintain. Um, that view from Gillardy Way. And then this scheme being kind of the most impactful on the Combo Mall view. And so as you walk through, that AQ piece isn't necessarily allowed to be revealed. And you know, we've, we've heard um, through, we had a design workshop last week with SFU and actually the SFSS, and we heard that, that was actually maybe important to maintain that view. Um, it is part of the SFU experience, and blocking that you know, isn't necessarily, it's not necessary. Um, with the design, and so we're looking at how we can push back and not have that happen. And then standing on Combo Mall, again, providing opportunities for artwork on the underside. And one of the things we would again like to do, and whatever this final kind of scheme ends up looking like, is to use the building to create, sh create covered outdoor spaces and then possibly create these opportunities for something interesting on the underside.